Friends and fellow gamers, welcome to Adventure with Roger, and welcome to the best MMO series, question mark, where we play every MMO we can get our hands on. Obviously, not every MMO out there can be the best. Some of the ones that we encounter will be barely surviving MMOs, in which we will refer to you as BS MMOs. The first thing I'd like to do is express my gratitude to every single person supporting this channel, either by subscribing to it or on Patreon. I want to say thank you so much for being here to every single one of you. Now let's jump into this MMO and see what it's all about, shall we? Today, friends and fellow gamers, you're in for a real furball-sized treat because you're about to experience Dark Age of Camelot. Truly one of the best MMOs ever made, and today we're trying out their free-to-play model, which offers us three factions and three races in each one of them. We've decided on Hibernia and a Furbolg race, who will be a male blade master extraordinaire, cunning and ruthless with a hint of ladies Furbolg inside of them. <laughs> All wrapped up into a killing machine in the Celtic ways of the sword fighting. What an adventure we're about to have. Let's customize. All right, what do we got for hair color going on here? We're definitely going with green. Yes, green it is. And for we're going to be short for a bulk. We don't want to be too towering tall over our enemies. We want to give them a shred of innocence, a shred of like they might be able to win. We're going to leave the attributes the way they are, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. Alright, we're jumping into the town of Fintane. Talking to Kilroy, who's going to show us the ropes in this little tutorial of Dark Age of Camelot. He gives us a little quest, showing us some stuff, some basic things, and we accept the quest, and before you know it, He's telling us all about the different types of quest icons in the game. We have blue ones and yellow ones and clear gray colored ones and they all mean something different and it's all good because it's easy to understand. You know, I gotta say, starting off in a tutorial area in a game like this showing me the ropes, I really like this. And uh, Learning an older MMO like this sometimes can be a pain in the butt, but in Dark Age of Camelot, they've got a nice little tutorial area making it easy for me. First up, they're showing me the monster cons and all the way from flimsy all the way up to unyielding. So that's good to know. Really easy to understand. The next thing they want us to learn about is the simple commands for combat that make this particular tab targeting system truly unique for its day. There's a built-in follow, stick to target, and attack target buttons, which really help out, especially when PvPing. I remember these being extremely useful when being in large PvP groups when we were out in the frontiers ganking people. The next thing they tell you about are the unique types of fighting styles each class can have. And of course, they stick me on with the old training dummy with skill telling me I need to equip the skill on the old hot bars. Got it? Good. Now we're ready for a true adventure, aren't we? Well, almost. I need to uh, equip that skill on the old hot bar first. Next is the healer telling me that if I die, I can give her a few coins to heal my wounds or soul. Not sure you know uh, those healer types, they tend to be a little bit handsy if you're not careful, so we better watch out for her. Next up is Dagnelia. He gives me a free cloak and says equip it. And uh, I say thank you very much, take the cloak, thank you very much, and I move on. Okay, so it looks like we got a bunch of trainers standing around over here. And oh boy, I wish I could play a Minotaur in free to play. But maybe another time. I say, uh, smell you later, cowman. And I've got some killing to do. And I jog on. Alright, so we're running back over to here. And uh, further examining my journal, I realize that I have to kill three crotch monsters. That's right, I said crotch. 
And, uh, well, that's gross, right? But if they want some dead crotchety monsters, who am I to argue with them? At least they're not spiders. So there I go. I kill a couple of crotchetes and I say crotch you very much and head in for a turn in. Artigan here, he gives me a tunic and sends me to my class trainer, who is a female furbog. She manages to get my sword up, and uh, not the steel kind. As she tells me about the various weapons, I ask her if she knows any good sword makers, and she slaps me in the face and sends me on my way. Now there's a couple things you need to understand about Dark Age of Camelot, and that is that every single class has different weapon styles that they can choose from. And if it's a mage, it's different uh, magic styles, basically. So as a Blade Master, I can choose from uh, like Blade Master, I can use Piercing, I can use uh, Celtic Dual Wielding, or a Shield. So I have a lot of different uh, skill lines, so to speak, that I can choose from. Right here is a good example of the training regiment. I can do blades, blunts, piercings, parrying, Celtic duels, or shields. And I just choose my points and which tree I want to go into. And as I add points to it, it unlocks certain skills in those trees. So you can definitely go down two different trees if you'd like to, or just stick to one and get more skills from that particular tree. So I decide to move on, and that's when I meet the Hastener. He makes me fast, and he makes me run like the wind for a bigger fellow. And we're off to the northeast, and that's easy to find because of the handy dandy compass that they give me. And wouldn't you know it, we're gonna have to save the village from a wolf invasion. Tally ho, I say, and wham bam, thanks for the pelts, Mr. Wolf. You were a good adversary. Combat feels pretty good for an 87 and a half year old MMO. <laughs> and what's this I see? A named wolf in black called Blackfang? Surely I can test my mettle on this wolf. And here we go. A shining blade into a misty gloom and a Celtic Nova. And yes, we've done it. Off to see the captain. Oh, I know he's going to reward me big time. He'll probably give me like a uh, choice of one of his daughters or a key to the city. Oh, a pair of boots works too. That's fun. Captain Viteri tells me I have to go kill some Albion invaders. So here we go. We shall climb the highest mountain, wage against the raging rivers, and uh, we'll get there someday. In the meantime, I'll go repair my armor by handing my armor pieces to the repair person. I'll, you know, get some quick hastening from the good old hastener guy, and we'll swim across the river. Here we go. There's the Albion scum. Invader number one. We're going in. Oh yeah. Check out this epic combat. Oh, the jumping, destroying sword mass straight to her face. Oh, she's already half dead. Oh, she blocks one. But look out, I come back with another. Oh, ooh, ooh, slice and dice. Oh, here we go. Oh, one down, two to go. So I quickly dispatch of the other two Albium scum and teach them who they're messing with. Eh, steal and a f and I run up over here and steal a firing pin from this trebuchet and meet up with my ranger friend named Aaron Duil, who gives me a pair of pants and threatens me with a helmet upgrade. So I say to him, you fur bogged me. <laughs> you furbog me so well and show me who I have to kill to get this fine hat you promised me and he points over here so I make quick work of a couple of sentries and a sergeant 
And that's when I ran into a little bit of a hiccup. And perhaps I bite off a little more than I can do. Just accidentally, of course. So I have to run up here and kill one of these commanders. So as I get close enough, I realize, oh, now you've done it. You pulled two of them. What do we do? What do we do? Quick, make a decision. Okay, we're fighting. We're going to fight it out. Yep. Yep. It's not going so well. Her health isn't going down any faster than mine. Okay, it's not looking so good. Uh, we start to back up. Uh, we're going to make a run for it. Where's the sprint button? Damn it, I forgot to put sprint on the hot bar. Make Ray for the make it for the river. For <laughs> surely they won't swim across the river after us. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's they're swimmers. They're on the Olympic swim team. Look out. We're going down. Oh god. Furbog down. This is when I realized I furbogged up. So I released, headed back to town. Talk to the healer. She was nice enough to give me a freebie, so I thanked her and moved on. I ran by the hastener on the way back, got myself a little bit of haste to make myself fast, and I headed back for round two. But this time, they die. <laughs> this time in round two, I decide I'm going to try a good old-fashioned body pull instead of running all the way up there like an idiot. And just a little closer. Now back up a little bit. Now a little bit closer. A little bit. There she goes. Oh yeah. This time you go down. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. And a little bit of a dead commander incoming. I say to her, I look at her straight in the eyes and I say, Take this and that, you Albion scum. Ooh. And I head back for a turn in. This time, surely, bards will be there to sing songs about my triumphant return. So I head back to Captain Viteri, and he gives me a nice hat. I accept a quest from him, and he tells me to go talk to the girl standing right next to him. And she gives me a sexy little sword. It's pretty nice of him, pretty nice of him. So we go ahead and we choose the sword and we put it in our bags and we complete the quest. Then we talk to Captain Viteri once more and we level up again. Oh yeah. And as I'm getting ready to move on as the new Swordmaster Forbog extraordinaire, nigh unstoppable, something incredible happened. Another player called big damn little man looked straight up at me and said I don't need this junk and threw his stuff on the ground and ran off it was a crazy anomaly I don't know what to make of it but he's in the Tirnanog Adventurers Guild and that's something truly said yeah, you're really, uh, you really are somebody when you're part of the Tirnanog Adventurers and uh, that was the end of the encounter Truly crazy. Something I don't know if I'll ever experience ever again, honestly. So I make my way over and I talk to a Commander Fluffy Guard man. And he tells me that the Midgardians are causing a ruckus. So I head over to assess the situation, Furbog style. As I run across the bridge, I find out that, yep, he's right. And I need to take out four of these Midgard invaders. And, uh, here we go. That's one. Uh, that's two. Oh boy, we pulled two yellow cons again. I'm starting to have flashbacks. <laughs> this isn't going well for us. Oh god, run for it, Marty! Help me, baby Jesus! Help me, Tom Cruise! Help me, Oprah Winfrey! So once again, we release, we talk to the Hansy healer, get our haste from the hastener guy, 
and we're back into the fray to kill two more Midgard invaders. And that's three. That's four. Turns out that when you're not an idiot and pull too many, you make quick work of the situation. But now we have to kill the dreaded commander of the Midgard force. And he's guarded by several Huskarls. Well, we'll see what happens. And that's that. Huskarl number one. Down for the count. Looking at the commander like he's raw and juicy. I'm just going to take you down to Chinatown, buddy. Oh, yeah. You're going down, commander man. And you're dead. Ah, <laughs> too easy. Um, but guess what? No quest update, because you have to kill the Huskarls first. So joke's on you, Furbog. Joke's on you. So I go ahead and take out the other Huskarl and wait for the Midgard commander to respawn. I wait patiently by the riverside. As he respawns, I pull out my blade. It's a mighty blade. It's made out of hefty, hefty steel. And as I bring it down on his head... I crack his skull open and he just gets decapitated and blood runs down the side of the hill into the pond. As I make my way back to the quest giver to turn it in, the forces of the rest of the Midgardians give up from attack the keep as they realize that they were bested. So I head back, turn in my quest, and get a pair of gloves. Thank you very much. I accept. That's when Captain Innery looks at me and she says, Where have all the good men gone and where are all the gods? Where's the street rise Hercules to fight against the odds? Isn't there a white knight upon a fiery steed? Late at night, I toss and I turn and I dream of what I need. I need a hero. So I head up to the keep and I make quick work of the Midgardian invaders. Oh, yeah. One more hit. One more hit. Oh, a miss. Swing and a miss. Oh, that's two. This little hunter is so disrespectful he doesn't even turn around to attack me. That's three. And that's four. And that's five. And this is number six. As I head into the keep, a triumphant Fergbalg, I realize that, shoot, they're probably going to name a town after me. After this ferocious awesomeness, turns out I'm just going to level up. So, as I talk to a balding little Lyrikeen who teleports me back to Fintain, I realize I am a hero. So I speak to Captain Viteri and get my just rewards for being a hero that I am. A good old furball handshake and a thank you. What more could a hero need? He also tells me to head to Magmel. A small settlement in the heart of Hibernia. As an old Hibernian player of Dark Age of Camelot, I have to tell you that Magmel is one of my favorite places in this 100% true fantasy open world MMORPG. And it's times like these you wish you could experience all over again for the first time. So as I go around town picking up every quest I can lay my furball hands on and I start to enjoy the ambiance and the music of old Hibernia. Ah, how it brings back the memories of grouping with my old buddies. As I pick up one final quest from the good old battleground channeler and receive my druid buffs from the Magmel Druid, the Realm Enhancement, I hand him a coin, and he hands me GM buffs, and I say, Thank you very much, Mr. Druid. I'm off on an adventure. Alright, friends and fellow gamers, 
Perhaps you're wondering if you should start playing Dark Age of Camelot. Well, I have to tell you, it's one of the most unique and true fantasy games ever made. You will find yourself exploring an open sandbox, playing unique classes not seen in any other MMO ever, traversing through trials of Atlantis and searching for legendary artifacts, and raising your realm ranks through PvP. But above all of that, experience an MMO unlike any other ever made. Thanks for going on this adventure with me. My name is Roger, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care of yourself, everyone. Please don't forget to drop a like on this video, and remember to join me several times per week for more game-related content. I'd like to give a shout-out to everyone helping support and grow this channel, either by subscribing for free or on Patreon for just a buck and a half per month. Thank you so much.